Jacob's most likely off stealing another carriage somewhere, or accidentally pushing the Queen down a flight of stairs. There you are! <laughs> I have someone I'm simply for you to meet. Uh, do, 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 do. Come with me. <laughs> Your Majesty, may I present Miss uh, Evie Fry. You are the one responsible for Mr. Gladstone's mishap. Your Majesty, I apologize. I... The cake is particularly good. Enjoy the ball. I really must be going. Miss Fry. May I have this dance? Mr. Starrick, you've had your fun, but the game is over. Uh -uh. Listen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Time is a wonderful thing, Miss Fry. It heals all wounds. We may make mistakes while dancing, but the mazurka ends, and then we begin again. Problem is, everyone forgets. They trip on the same mistakes over and over. People can learn. Can they? Isn't everyone around you repeating the same steps? But if one man could remember the dance, could know the time, then he could change things for the better. I have had enough. This dance is nearly over. Soon, the people will forget the generation on this terrace. The ruin you nearly wrought on London. When the music ceases, Miss Fry, your time is up. And mine begins. Problem. 
Freddy. Starek peppered the regulars with his own men and took several guards hostage. Your weapons are in there. and rescue the captives. How? It's impossible to tell the difference. Oh, ye of little faith. Now to find the real royal guards. Get you out. Hold still for a moment. You have my thanks. Thanks, mate.
to him in. Now, what can that be? Ah, sorry, insect! Right, lads, that'll be all. Lead with one right foot. Oh, my! Everything all right, my dear? Do you require assistance? I never liked balls. <laughs> Here, the location of the vault. Go. Just like that? No plan. No time for plans. I'll catch up as soon as I'm rid of this infernal contraption. Exploiting, I warn you, my boy. But you do not listen. Requiem's cart and pache. The shroud was never meant for you! 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
Rectify my mistake. London will perish without me. You flatter yourself. I would have created a paradise. The city belongs to the people. You are but one man. I am at the very top of the order. You were, Mr. Starrick. <laughs> you were.
Shame we won't be partners anymore. It's for the best, isn't it? Are you gonna wear the shroud and run London? Whatever it gives, it takes from someone else. You'd continue to age without me. You'd become like father. The fate worse than death. Will you wear it? After you sorted out the boroughs, the chaos I caused, I couldn't compete. Jacob Fry stepping back. Who's blackmailing you? Is it George? He wouldn't dare. <laughs> I've missed you. Me too. Would it be possible to continue where we left off? I'd love nothing more. I'm starting to think Father didn't know everything about everything. <laughs> Henry. It's a big world out there. With London in the center. Perhaps not the very center. I came as soon as I could. Do not worry. I'll... I'll head back to the train. Did I... Did I jeopardize the mission? Henry, you saved it. I think you belong in the field. With me. A carriage. Nicely done, Freddy. Mr. Abeline, please. Your Majesty. Miss Fry. You've met before? Did I never mention? Mr. Abeline informs me that you three are responsible for saving my life. Is this true? It is, Your Majesty. Evie Fry, step forward. And you? My brother. Ma'am. Jacob Fry. And this is Mr. Henry Mr. Green. Fry? Mr. Green. Neil. Invest you all in the Order of the Sacred Garter. Thank you, Your Majesty. If you are as adept as Mr. Abeline implies, I may call on you. Sergeant Abeline tends to exaggerate, Your Majesty. We shall meet again. And Miss Fry. Ma'am? Should you want it? I saved you some cake. <laughs> Father would be proud of you. <laughs> Dame Evie Fry. <laughs> Sir Jacob Fry. <laughs> Race you to the train. You're on. That's it. It's under the palace. Time to go. Let's get the shroud to Dr. Grammatica immediately. 
Sigma team beat us here. We're too late. What do we do? Killing really is the least productive way to achieve our goals. Kill them all. Leave them Contact! Cover me! That skinny piece of shit tried to murder me, Berg. I want him them to bleed. Whispered dreams that only poison us, them that told us lies of their bravery, them that preached our progress and put us in the poor house. Them done the horrid murder on bloody stages, them that loudly crowed their humility, lords and dames that sung in the chapels on a Sunday. All quiet now, their mouths are stopped up. Hold the chill, goddammit! They lie flung in rags and make no sound. Underground, underground. Only the mission matters! Understood! Those who fought Sean! for something better Those who taught by how they live Loved ones taken long before their work Galena, we need an exit! Secure the vault! Our targets are righteous! We need to go! Now! Understood. Shroud! Forget the bloody shroud! Stay with me, Bex. Please! We go. Good work in there, Initiate. In time, we will recover the shroud. And hey, we pulled a feed from our bug in Isabel's computer before they shut us out. Playing it now. Sorry about the mess. <laughs> so, how's the shroud gonna help you create a new clone? It's not. When the shroud is wrapped around the body, it scans it for damage and then reconstructs it on a cellular level. You're not making a clone. You're gonna recreate a precursor from scratch. Bingo! The Phoenix Project timetable just got accelerated big time. I'm going to call Alan Rick and deliver the good news. <laughs> it's like Christmas! <laughs> Hello? It's me? Brought the shroud as you asked, but I'm scared. Do not fear me. You've done well. I'm not scared of you. I'm scared for you. Anyone finds out what you've been doing. You have played your part, my instrument. I will save you. I will save you all. I'll take to father. 
friends your majesty we understand that with crawford staric gone a certain secret society finds itself searching for leadership an upstart faction seeks to enter london and seize power do you feel your life is in danger ma'am no rather i fear that the people of this grand city may suffer i call upon you to foil this traitorous plot you can depend on us. We will meet my loyal aide at the docks for instructions. The work begins immediately. I am Alfred Fleming. I run Her Majesty's Secret Service. Agents are here disguised as civilians. Get them into position for our ambush. The ship will soon arrive from Boston. Its cargo, dynamite. Its crew, Templar. What say you to greeting it with an ambush? If we must. 
We must. I've got a job for you. I have some work for you. Brought to me at the station, alive. Something I need you to do. Get them. You're dead. Would you care to tell me your plans? Go to hell. Now, now. Staring may be dead and gone, but the Temporal Order will never die. We will rise again, like a phoenix from the ashes, bring the world to its knees. Yes, well, best of luck with that. Something bad's gone wrong. carry on from here. My people are recovering their explosive cargo. You did fine work today. I will have a chat with our distinguished guest here to see what schemes he and his friends are brewing. Do let me know if he says anything interesting. Of course.
Fleming has attempted to force a confession from your prisoner. The miscreant refuses to talk. Will you speak to the villain and learn his secrets? Leave it to me, Your Majesty. Keep your wits about you, Brooke. You're a great if I come over there! Why don't I come over and teach you a lesson?
Must I pummel you severely about the head and shoulders? Or can we simply talk? Let me live. Might as well. The order was to load a train with explosives at Westminster. It'll detonate before reaching Southwark Station and kill everyone aboard. You people in your damn dynamite. When does it happen? Please. It's the next train. It should leave at any moment. You'll never make it in time. Kill them! Right. In with explosives at Westminster. It'll detonate before reaching Southwark Station and kill everyone aboard. You people in your damn dynamite. When does it happen? It's the next train. It should leave at any moment. You'll never make it in time. Oh. Oh. the cars.
Much lamented husband adored these gardens. He called them his one safe port. Where I get you? I'll hang you from Tower you shouldn't Brick. Be here. Get going. You do not want to bother me today. You're a <laughs> with your fellow conspirators soon enough. If we can't blow up a what building, we'll just have to settle for blowing up an assassin! Oh,
need to put an end to these upstart templars and quickly.
The final group of upstarts are making their last desperate stand. They have penetrated the Houses of Parliament and plan to detonate whatever explosives they have left. Please find Mr. Fleming, so we might put an end to this once and for all. There are still more bomb about. They must be removed quickly and quietly. doesn't matter. No one will miss me. I've never even been in love. Do you think she has someone to do? Steady, Prime Minister. I'll have you free in a moment. Not another step, assassin. You've lost, don't you see? The Houses of Parliament are rigged to explode at the last stroke of twelve. There's nothing you or anyone else can do to stop it now. The Houses of Parliament will be leveled. Centuries of history are going to be blown away in a second. I demand you kill this lunatic! <laughs>
Thank you, my young friend. Now, please come with me. You and your sibling have been summoned. Approach. You have honored us with your loyalty and courage. Long may we strengthen the Empire together. Your Majesty, we will always work to ensure the safety of the people. But with the greatest respect, our philosophy forbids us from assisting with the expansion of the Empire. Perhaps, ma'am, you could consider putting an end to your imperialist desires. <laughs> I understand and respect your position. Bound as you are by your creed, you will indulge me one final time and receive these gifts. Goodbye, and may God bless the noble fries. you'll be offered any more cake.
My dear friend, the Ghost Club has an extraordinary case for you. Spiritualist Thaddeus the Amazing has predicted his own death at his next seance. Could you have a look? Light the lamps! Oh, he's actually dead. He was an incredible psychic. I came to clarify some uh, personal financial matters. I don't understand what happened. He foretold his own death, but I didn't expect it to happen like this. This is so frustrating. I had a simple question, but have had to come back for seance after seance Week after week, each time Thaddeus divined a partial number from the other side, but never the entire correct number. Today he promised that I would get everything. I sought him out after the death of Mittens. I was so hoping to hear from my loved one. I'm convinced Thaddeus could have communicated Mittens' wishes to me. I must know to whom Mittens wishes that I should leave my fortune. And now Thaddeus is lost to us. I shall never know. Mittens is my beloved kitty cat. She was run over by a milk wagon several weeks ago. I've been trying desperately to contact my sweet thing ever since. I'm not well though, and likely haven't long to live myself. I have no doubt that his powers were genuine. He was able to tell me of my daily comings and goings and all manner of details that he couldn't possibly have known. He certainly was going to be able to put me in contact with my sister. I'm so sorry to lose Thaddeus. The oddest part is that he claimed all would be revealed to each of us before his death. I've been coming here to decide whether I should accept a marriage proposal. Thaddeus had been attempting to contact my departed sister so that she could give me advice. Thaddeus was a kind man who sincerely wanted me to make the best choice. Now what am I to do? Nothing but a showman, really. Each week he gave a seance with all his clients present together. So many people makes everything much more... Dramatic. I attend Lady Ursula at these sessions. She's ailing and needs someone to help her along. I have no particular belief in an afterworld, but if it comforts my lady, I see no harm.
I should go back and ask about this. Thaddeus felt that if I signed some papers, it would demonstrate to my dead father that I had absolute trust in Thaddeus. Lady Ursula's health is not good at all. And now she's lost her cat, it's almost like she has nothing left to live for. He's been Lady Ursula's butler for years. We have plans to marry. But first, Douglas needs to put together a little nest egg. He says he'll have some money soon. Lady Ursula was planning to leave her fortune to her cat, Mittens. Since the cat passed on, she's been going to that spiritualist and hopes that Mittens will tell her what to do with the money.
I believe I should reinterrogate a suspect. Never trust a man who tells you what you want to hear. He's after something. Taking advantage of my daughter's love for her departed sister. With that charlatan gone, things can get back to normal. My daughter's engagement to Everett Boyd can be announced at last. Janice's eldest sister was strong-willed. Janice always followed her lead. That's why it's so sad that she asked for advice, even in death. Time for Janice to think for herself. I know what's best for her. A girl of Janice's age should be married. Everett is a very sensible young man from a good family. He'll be very successful, I'm sure of it. Father mentioned this swindler to me. I understand it's because of him that my engagement has been delayed. <coughs> Janice is a lovely creature. I would be honored were she to accept my proposal. I do adore her. I know the owner of a local brewery, and I'm convinced his business will flourish. Sure. He just needs some financial backing. Now Janice is free to be married at last. I'll invest my dowry in the brewery and make a fortune. That's me. Yeah, some fella come by here every so often. Gives me a silver sixpence if I tell him everything about the folks in that house. Nothing unusual about him. Just a regular fella. I've seen him go into that building over there.
I should return and find out about this. You think someone paid Thaddeus to tell my lady that a cat wanted them to inherit? Well, that would be quite a clever scheme indeed. He was going to reveal my plot. He paid the price for betraying a fellow crook. This Thaddeus fellow was rather too clever by half. But you pieced it all together very cleverly. Mr. Raymond was particularly interested in this one. He admired the duplicity of Thaddeus.